Hey everyone, welcome to The Withering Effect, episode 118. Today's date is October 24th, 2021, and I am Duds, or Duds versus known to the rest of the interwebs. My name is Jimbo, you may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 We've had a big update come out, along with some new music. Mm-hmm. So we've asked the music master, one and only Decoy, to join us on the show. Welcome to the show, Decoy. Welcome, Decoy. There is only one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. The only, the one and only. Well, and see, you were supposed to be on our post show for Minecon, but the timing didn't line up. Right. No, I always work strange times. It's fine. Always have been. So yeah. We got you now. Next time, as we as we said, I, I'll take an early vacation mm -hmm. for my Minecraft Live. Maybe. Well, since you're the guest this week, I'm going to let you start. What have you been up to? We've seen you're, you're diving deep into the new music with the couple YouTube videos you've released. Yeah. Well, before the music rudely interrupted everything, <laughs> I was uh, working uh, in my single player world. Mm -hmm. I uh, built, um, what's it called? A super smelter. Yeah. So that some episodes go, and I wanted to add some features and uh, functions to it. Now, in the wild update, we will get the chest boat, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But right now, the donkey boat is the best option. <laughs> <laughs> so I've upgraded uh, my my donkey boat. It, it's called Fed Ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Named I remember by your our boat. friend uh, Freddy Bushboy, actually. And uh, yeah, I added shulker boxes to it, so it's a lot more powerful. So I can go back and forth to my desert area, uh, load, load it up with sand. And I also uh, decorated the bottom of the, the, that bay area, because that was generated before even the optic aquatic. So it's just a dead bay. So that was a lot of fun, adding all of the, the water plants. Mm -hmm. We also have the drips, drip uh, leaves now. That looked awesome. And the moss blocks. That was a lot of fun, actually. Moss is such a great new block to the game. Like, when I first saw it, I went, yeah, okay. I use it everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And nice. I think you have to be careful so it's not moss everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it makes the game less grindy mm -hmm. using the moss block. It really does. My new favorite thing, though, is mis mixing moss, grass, podzle, and the gravelly dirt. Oh. I forget what it's called. Coarse dirt. That's it. Coarse dirt. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. It's an instant uh, inspiration boost. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are stuck, you know, I don't know what to do here, especially if it's some sort of landscape. Try, try to bone meal the moss block <laughs> and instantly. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yeah. Now I can continue. It's landscaping in a single block. Yeah, it is. It really is. But then, actually, in the background, I'm also working on a secret mega project. Oh, really? That won't be finished for many months, I think. But I've slowly started to, to work on it. Ah. It's, uh, it needs patience, and, uh, you know, it's okay. It will, I, I think I will have it out before the wild update hopefully at least but that's the the time span mm -hmm. that's exciting but as you said after after the latest snapshot it has been all music so earlier today i released a note block tutorial for one of the songs other side i saw that other side yeah isn't that the the disc right mm -hmm. yeah the music disc yeah so we'll see if the interest keeps uh, high i will make more music uh, videos but, you know, the most fun is always the, the Let's Play videos. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Exactly. Yeah, I heard there is a new Lena Rain music coming out, or new music in general. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, I wonder, wonder what, mm -hmm. you know, what they sound like. And uh, I was going to go search it. I was like, I wonder if Decoy <laughs> made a video yet. And it wasn't yep. out just yet. It was like I heard about it, you know, hours after... They released it. There's new music. I was like, I'm going to wait. <laughs> and I think it was like later that day. Bam, there's a decoy video with some of the mu new music. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I, I knew it. I knew you'd be on it. 
you know what what happened i was preparing for a birthday party for my oldest uh, son here so you canceled the party and did the video <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe uh, one hour before the guests were arriving i see a notification from carl asking you know because of the new music do you want to be a guest <laughs> on the podcast <laughs> and i was like oh no now i will be late you know if you want to do something with with the music you have to be one of the first to pump out the video right mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah so so i put out some i think two videos later that evening mm -hmm. and now now the note block it's a strange thing you know posting someone else's music to youtube yeah but uh, Mojang is uh, allowing people to do that. So, and especially now, every YouTuber is trying to be the first to show the new music. Yeah. But it, it's fun. It's uh, the interest is so high, and you get a lot of interesting comments. It's it's like a community thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Com common interest. But enough about me. Who is next? Let's go with the guy who didn't fill out his notes. <laughs> yeah, but I guess we could start with me. Which, yeah, I got on here to do my notes, and I did not fill out what we've done this week. Um, I I did a little recording trying to set up replay mod camera angles. I kind of messed up on one clip that I did, so I bit went back this morning mm -hmm. and fixed it. Yeah, I, I still still have to finish polish out the intro, and then uh, that's where you come in, duds. Talked about doing a little segment. Yeah, you said on my stream Friday night you wanted to do that Saturday. I was on the server most of the day Saturday. I wasn't even home Saturday. <laughs> I My mom called and was like, uh, yeah, we got this Halloween thing going on. She set up a big party for the kids for this little Halloween carnival type of deal at her house. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she went all out. She had prizes and stuff for the kids. There's probably 15 kids there, you know, dressed up in their Halloween costumes. It was a lot of fun. I forgot it was yeah. this Saturday. She called me. It was like an hour before. Mm -hmm. Hey, you bringing the drinks? I was like, oh, crap. I was like, come on, kids. Let's get your costumes on. Yeah, I'm hurrying around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went to the in-laws later for dinner. So, yeah, I wasn't even home to do any of that. I will be able to do that later mm -hmm. if uh, you want to do that later. As long as it's for the Bucks game, I'm good. Yeah, it should be. But, yeah, um, that's all the, the Minecraft that I've done. Okay. I've had a busy but slow week at the same time. Work kicked my butt. There were two instances this week where I came home, ate dinner, and then fell asleep in my chair at my desk. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I was so exhausted. But did some live streaming. Live streamed with Carl this week, which was fun. We played Winter's uh, Candy Minigame, which is actually really fun. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not like a normal minigame on Survival Minecraft, which is really cool. Matter of fact, I have to go back and play it again because I need a clip from it for my episode and I forgot to record while I was with Carl. <laughs> Can't you clip it from Twitch somehow? Well, I want to replay my footage. Ah, uh, okay. It's not that big of a deal. I've been watching the replay. It's a, a lot of fun. It, it really was, especially because me and Carl decided to see what weapons worked best against the quote-unquote ghosts. Uh-huh. The trident wasn't that bad. I I found, granted, I don't have loyalty on my trident. So every time I threw it, it gets stuck somewhere. And if I threw it against the ceiling, I'd have to like build up on some blocks to go get it. Never thought I'd hear you say that. The trident isn't that bad. Carl got to clip that. Against ghosts. <laughs> the Well, you're about to clip something even bigger. The best weapon <laughs> was the crossbow. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that. I was going to suggest that. Because of the range. Well, it's if you can get the triple shot crossbow, mm -hmm. these guys like tend to cluster every once in a while. So you can get multiple hits when they cluster. So the trident mm -hmm. and the crossbow are best for this game. Well, like single shot, the bow is still the best. Like it one shot kills most of everything. Yeah. The problem is there's usually seven or eight things in the room with you. So... If you can take out multiples at one time, you want to do that. So that's why the crossbow I put up there. The trident wasn't necessarily the best. It was just some of the most fun I had with the trident. Mm. Mainly because I didn't know I needed to hit something five times to kill it. 
<laughs> I could get it in one or two. Did you try TNT? <laughs> I was just about to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't try TNT. I did not want to blow up Winter's build. Okay. We did want to use firework rockets, but we didn't have fire charges to make those, so oh well. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Winter is a genius. Winter is a genius. Coming to my episode, I've been working on greening up the mountain. So it's a very gray mountain, and I wanted to add a little bit of life to it. So I've got the magical moss block in places. I've got, uh, is it blooming azalea leaves all over the place? So it finally looks more green. And then I have that little side island that's basically just been covered in torches since day one, and that's it. Mm-hmm. The last two days I worked on grading it down. I think I've removed seven to ten layers of sand on the top to get it to the right height. And now I'm building a giant ship wheel, which doesn't seem like it's that complicated. I mean, it's just a big circle with some spokes on it. But instead of having it facing a cardinal direction like north to south and east to west, I have it like crooked. And it's not like a 45 degree crooked. It's like a 33% crooked. Mm -hmm. Making a circle in Minecraft that's turned, it, it's been a little complicated. Yeah. The good thing is I want it to look old and broken, so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And it, it's turning out really well. Cool. Didn't know you were even working on that island. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to get the good, because at the end of every season, I always post my base as my YouTube banner. Okay. Mm. So it's getting close to that time where I change my YouTube banner. I want to get a nice view of everything. And you, you will get uh, new views for your uh, Twitch trailer? Yeah, I could do that too. My little pre-stream video. Mm-hmm. Cool. But that's, that's kind of it for me. An easy week. Let's hop into the news. Mm-hmm. We're going to save the music for last, because obviously that's why we have the one and only decoy here. Right. Let's talk about something we talk about every time there's any kind of Minecraft news. What's that? Or distribution. Oh. <laughs> so they've increased the height of the Badlands as a way to bring gold ore generation up higher. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This also increases the number of blob springs. Oh, no, I read that wrong. Just increases the number of gold blobs. My bad. Springs were also something got updated with it. And it's like lava springs can now spawn in the upper mountain areas where there's a lot of snow like it can spawn on packed ice which i think is kind of weird yeah but as you think about it lava is like the hottest thing in the world Mm -hmm. i don't care what kind of ice it is it's probably gonna melt through the ice (laughs) yeah good thing it's minecraft yeah but yeah that is a strange place i mean i could see you know that's where volcanoes are that's kind of where lava comes from you know so Mm -hmm. it makes makes sense in that point of view but yeah on packed ice uh it's a little it's a little strange the, another big change is water springs won't generate above y 192 which makes sense because it's it's too cold up there to just turn into ice yeah right you're gonna get ice in that sense uh the next big thing was they reworked player spawn algorithm so you know how you jo- join a new world and it'll dump you right in the ocean that happens every once in a while yeah that's not going to happen, hopefully. They, they've worked with what they called controlled biome placement using climate parameters. Confusing. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not necessarily sure what that means, but I think it's just a the spawn algorithm is going to choose a specific biome, and that specific biome won't have the word ocean in it. That's good. Yeah, it's a good change. But now... Now the good stuff. Yeah, now the reason we're all here. They've added new music from Lena Rain. We have Other Side, Stand Tall, Left to Bloom, and uh, what is it? Winding and Infinite Infinite Amethyst. One More Day. You said One More Day. Oh, yeah, One More Day. I see it there. And then also music by Kumi Tinoko. Tinoka? I'm sorry if I said that completely wrong, but they have composed Floating Dream. Comforting Memories, and An Ordinary Day. All the new music's really good. I will say, before we get into it, mm, Pig Step better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. 
Uh, that's hard, hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. let's, let's give it a decoy. Decoy, your first thoughts on the new music. <laughs> uh, I just need to say, I, I listened to both the composers saying their names mm-hmm. on on YouTube, in YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. So, so Lena Rain, because that, that uh, last name is, uh, it's not completely clear how to pronounce it, but it's Rain, like, like Rain. Mm-hmm. The other composer uh, is called Kumi Tanyuka. Tanyuka, okay. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first impressions, um, I love them. Mm-hmm. I love everything, and it, it's a nice uh, mix. And I think we have a new hit that is an instant classic, also from what I've seen in my, in my YouTube uh, comments, and that's uh, Infinite Amethyst. Uh, by Lena Rain. Yep. I don't know if you've heard it. Yeah. I do like that one. Yeah. That to me, that's my top one. I li- I'd like them all, but Infinite Amethyst definitely stands out. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, I think some of the other tracks need some more time. You need to hear them more times. Well, I've also felt you kind of like need to hear them in game too to really get that feeling. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Right. <laughs> For us. Uh, I'm actually thinking of making an exception when 1.18 is new, just maybe recording an episode with the music for once, just to experience it. Mm -hmm. Because we we don't really do that. No. And I guess when you started to play Minecraft, did you play with the music on at that point? Yeah. Before I did the videos I did, I had that music cranked up. Hmm. Me too, I think. And I heard my kids uh, play all the t- time. So I heard, you know, I heard the music with the game. And we don't really do that anymore. So it's a bit yeah, unfair, maybe. We just hear the, the instant classics and then maybe don't give the others uh, the chance they deserve. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I like them all. Uh, Kumi's tracks are is- easily digestible, I think. They are... Yes. You know, nothing nothing strange. They are beautiful, perfect for studying or meditation. I think they will end up in a lot of those uh, playlists. I definitely feel that those music, when I was listening to it, I pictured myself like building a crop field or tending a garden in the game. Just something that you're like, yeah, some flowers here, or some leaves here. Just easy Minecraft building. Mm-hmm. You're not constructing anything. You're just like decorations and chill out vibes i'm curious if they'll have like certain situations where they start playing the music as far as i know it's more of a random you know randomly Mm -hmm. the music will come on Hmm. well no they they do have uh specific biomes you guys keep talking i will look it up real quick oh i didn't realize that uh i watched um slice lines uh video and he talked about the specific uh, biomes. I have them written down here, actually. Same here. Some songs play only in uh, caves, and some play only on, in, on mountains. Some of them play where there is a lot of greenery, like the lush caves and the meadows. Mm-hmm. I didn't know all this. There's actually one, one song that only plays in one biome, in the groves, and that's uh, Comforting Memories. Yes. So that will be an, uh, a rare song to come across if you just uh, play with the music on mm-hmm. in Minecraft. But it's also not the only song that plays in the Grove. It's just the only song that only plays in one place. Exactly, yeah. Because I, I know someone will say, well, Winding also plays in the Grove. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, but it also plays in Jagged Peak, Stony Peak, Dripstone Caves. So you will only hear comforting memories in a Grove. Now, I'm curious, at, at nighttime, I can't really remember too much. It's been a while since I played with the music on if you know there's much music during the nighttime or if we can get specific music for nighttime, you know, certain tracks you know, that, could, that could help Minecraft players to play during the night. Yeah. That, that actually is a really good idea to get people to play during nighttime instead of constantly skipping it would be to have different music for night that could be really awesome to listen to. Yeah, it could be something. 
because I didn't realize these triggered in certain biomes or stuff like that. And then I was thinking about nighttime. Like, have I heard a song during the nighttime? I don't think I have. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. There's one that sticks out in my head, and I just don't know the name of it. It's it's one of the original C418 songs, Hmm. and I only ever remember hearing it at a nighttime. That being said, I don't know if it triggers because of night or if it's just my memory putting it there. Yeah. I remember the OG Minecraft YouTubers, you know, around 2012, 2013 maybe, when uh, people still used the music in their videos. Mm-hmm. And there was a bit of talk. This is a this is a night song. It always plays at night. Ah. And this is a, this is a morning morning song, but I'm not sure. Yeah. And I don't think we ever got got the answer. I think it triggers more randomly than that. I know I've taken a step back from doing this my I don't know last ten or so episodes, but I'm very big on taking the Minecraft music and putting it as the music in my videos just because it it makes sense. Like when you're playing in game as YouTubers, we can't have the music playing at a relatively high volume if we're doing multiple cuts because then the song just kind of skips around. Mm -hmm. I've always taken and downloaded the Minecraft music and then put that as the background music, except for lately I got so sick and tired of hearing the same five songs over again. And face it, pig step doesn't really work well (laughs) as a background to a YouTube video. These songs will, and I'm super excited to put those in my videos. I think that's why they keep them non-copyrighted. You know, like yeah, Decoy is able to use these in his feed videos, or you know, we can put them in our backgrounds because Minecraft is such a creator-friendly game. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're going to hear it eventually in people's videos, and uh, to copyright it would just you know destroy some of that i feel like Uh, make people mad yeah yeah well let's not forget mojang understands content creators are free advertisements for their game yeah that too so they make it so easy for content creators to do basically whatever they want and i think that's part of the reason they've sold so many games is because they understand content creators are free advertisement they don't have to push their game because other people are going to do that for them right Mm -hmm. did you know that there is one song you can only hear on Spotify right now. They haven't put it in game. I did not know. They haven't put it in game? No. And of course, I have a theory. A theory. Okay. Hit us. <laughs> it's called Ancestry. And uh, it has that classic uh, semi-epic beauty. But it's also kind of scary. It has some kind of horror elements to it. Mm. Mm-hmm. And these composers were probably contracted before Mojang decided to take the Deep Dark out of 1.18. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might come to one one nineteen then. Maybe, if, if that's the case. No, makes complete sense. Yeah. When, when we saw the new Deep Dark from Minecraft Live, just the, the ambient sound and the the scary sounds from the skulk uh, sc- screecher. Mm-hmm. That was scary enough. Right. And I don't know if uh, any music might clash with that. So I'm not sure. Or if it's some kind of uh, when you are about to enter the deep dark, the music could be playing. But as soon as you trigger a uh, skulk screecher, it might stop maybe. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Ancestry. Having got to hear that gonna have to look it up i'm agree with you it's probably a deep dark song so it's also a good way to tease the deep dark knowing that it also is getting music too even though it's not out yet it might be a pr trick <laughs> yeah could be yeah but that, that's probably on youtube new as well if you don't have if you don't use uh, spotify so you can listen to it and see if, how scared you are <laughs> yeah i'd like to hear it now especially you explaining how creepy <laughs> it is <laughs> It's got a horror element, you say. It, I think it's mostly because it's kind of expected, uh, uh, uninspected. Mm-hmm. It starts out kind of beautiful, and, and then these jarring sounds oh. come in and kind of disturbs the, the ambience. Yeah, you have to listen. Listen to it and tell me what you think. 
As if the deep dark didn't need to be more scary. Right. <laughs> the first time I have Warden come out of the ground and get me in the butt, I will squeal. I know it. I think you need to turn the volume down, maybe, to not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> leave the computer screaming. Before we move on to uh, other stuff, I do want to say Bedrock had a beta come out, too. Mm -hmm. And they ended up getting the new Skulk blocks and playing around with them. I was kind of hoping they would get the new frame block so we can get a good in-person view from that. But from what I can find, they didn't get that in-game just yet. Oh, okay. I saw pictures mm -hmm. of it, but I didn't get yeah. to... It's a cool-looking block. Yeah, it is. goes great with the Deep Slate. I think it parked Deep mm -hmm. Slate. You know, maybe it's combined with yeah. something else. It looks like there's a lighter color in there mixed with it. I'm thinking it's Deep Slate and Iron. Could be. Hmm. I was thinking Calcite, but... Ooh, no, you're right. It could be Calcite. It depends. Yeah, well, to be continued. Yeah. They've, they've got the Skulk Flocks. Uh, it... It's not really showing us anything we didn't already know. We get to see the mob dying, turning into Skulk, hoeing for XP. Mm -hmm. So we got to finally kind of see that little bit of an XP farm going. And yeah, if you do the stone generator trick and have a spawner nearby, just have mobs fall to their death on this stone generator, it, it could be a viable XP farm. Yeah. I would assume, I don't know if it gives you more XP, because obviously Enderman Farm is the big daddy of XP farms. Right. Mm. I don't know if using a stone generator and a skulk block harvester there would be better than just a normal Enderman Farm, but... I could see it being used just for the convenience. You know, you don't have to go all the way to the end. Yeah. If you have a base with a spawner nearby, why, why not? You know, why not get a little bit more XP than you would normally get from a regular spawner? Mm. Exactly. Well, and that's just it. I couldn't really tell if it was worth it XP-wise Yeah. than to just use a normal spawn grinder. Yeah, because you do have to do the work of harvesting yeah. the skull pit also. Exactly. Well, let's go ahead and move on to listener comments if you guys are good with all the uh, news. Yeah. Yeah. Since Decoy is our guest, I actually have a listener comment for Decoy to read. We're going to let him ask his question first before we answer the other. Okay, then we have a question from KittyCat2. And they ask, what do you think frogs are going to do? What drops might they have? And that's, that's interesting. Well, this is an easy one for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think yeah, we're on I... the same, <laughs> same page. Yeah, I, you know what I want the frogs to do? I mentioned this many times. Uh, to eat the bees, of course. It, it's a flying insect. Mm. Frogs eat bees in real life. Just get, just <laughs> for love of God. <laughs> just eat the darn bees. <laughs> Can I please have that? I've been wanting this since I saw the bees. And then, you know, a little drawing of the frog. Frogs could be coming. I'm like, oh, there's, you know, there's hope. You know, give me hope. And now, uh, it will look hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the animation would be great too. But uh, drops, I I can't really think of any drops. No frog legs. Yeah, yeah, frog <laughs> legs. Uh. What I was thinking was, uh, you know, poison for potions. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. I didn't think about that. But then you see the colors they have chosen for the frogs. Yeah. They are kind of bland, right? Right. And the poisonous, most poisonous uh, frogs are the most colorful mm -hmm. as well. So I don't know if they want to go, if they have decided to not go that route. Well, I think the swamp ones are like an orange-ish, if I'm not mistaken. I know the dark green are in the, uh, what is it, the snow. And in the desert, they're like a whitish, like a light gray. Hmm. Yeah, those ones are kind of bland. I was thinking maybe the swamp one could be the poisonous one. Maybe just a specific one you could get a poison out of. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you can make them hatch in that specific uh, biome. Mm -hmm. could, be, mm -hmm. could be fun, maybe. Are you saying we might actually get void frogs? <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. Hmm. Some people will get the reference. Some do. Yeah, frogs in the end. Honestly, I don't think frogs are going to drop anything. 
And other than eating insects, I don't see them doing much either. I know Jimbo really wants them to eat the bees. I can see that happening. I also can't see that happening as the bee is bigger than the frog. So it'd be a little weird. Nah, it wouldn't be weird at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just keep watching the little animation. The frog walking animation is like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do love the frog animation. People got really excited for axolotls and how cute they were, and I was like, eh, yeah, whatever. Now I'm just like, frog. Frogs are adorable. Do you know what I just realized? What's that? We might get ceramites eventually, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's, a, that's frog food. <laughs> I'm sure it would be. That's a good call. Might be in Minecraft. Yeah, maybe. Because we don't know how many biomes they will have time to update before... 1.19 is uh, done. Maybe we will get ceramites as well. They were part of the uh, Savannah update, weren't they? Yeah. They mentioned that. That or Badlands. I think so. Yeah. I think it was Savannah, though. I think you're on to some decoy. I think they will do that. Hmm. Yeah, as of right now, frogs can't be bred. They only, you know, eat the the fireflies, which aren't. I think it's like an ambient thing. I don't think it's a yeah. like an entity. So, yeah, it's one of the first mobs that so far we've seen that they can breed themselves. They're not relying on a person to breed them. Mm. Yeah, or the tadpoles just spawn. We don't know. That's true too. We don't even know if they come from the frogs. That's very true. Yeah, it's not like the turtles where you walk up and you see we see we and you just see sand start flying everywhere. Yeah, you figured they'd mention. You know, you could breed them when they introduced the frog, but yeah, nothing, nothing about it. Termites might be the way or the thing, but there's, there's a lot more biomes to update. You know, they could give us many more, Mm -hmm. many more insects, more bugs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's move on to our second question we have from Weezer Good. They ask, what would we add to the wild update staying within the general theme? This is an easy one for me. I don't know about you guys. What do do you think? A backpack. (laughs) Oh, okay. I've been complaining about inventory updates. They have this wild update. And if I'm trucking through a swamp or climbing a mountain, I got a backpack with me. Yeah. To me, it only makes sense. If you want me to travel to these remote locations, I'm going to need something to carry my stuff. (laughs) I was thinking the archaeology thing. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they didn't add that to this. Being a wild update, you know, updating the biomes, you figure, you know, it it would fit in with this type of update. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, Cub Fan event with the developers? I got to listen to some of it, not all of it. Yeah, I heard they mentioned something about that. Yeah, I just heard a summary. He he talked about it in his Hermitcraft uh, episode afterwards. Hmm. And they have moved both bundles and archaeology archaeology <laughs> to indefinitely into the future, from what I understand. Mm. Oh, okay. So they will not be included in 1.19 either. Gotcha. Happy dolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they keep bundles in the game in the way that they are now, where we can still access it through a creative inventory, that will allow... Uh, servers and mod makers and stuff to have stuff like winter where he made the pumpkin basket for all the candies and stuff yeah doing small mini games like that would make them at least a little useful i would want something more for the desert Mm -hmm. but i'm not sure what but that's the most that feels so dead and that's uh, maybe the point as well but yeah update the desert in, in some way yeah. Did they ever give us a, a concept art of the desert update? I think they did. Was that ever a biome vote? I think they did. I know they did Savannah. Was that the ostrich? The ostrich and the tumbleweeds. Yeah, maybe that is uh, coming then. Yeah, we could see those. Yeah, I'm really hoping they bring forth all those biome uh, vote updates and put them in the game with this update. just seems logical to do that. I would love a desert with a oasis. Yeah. That's right. The desert had palm trees and meerkats. Mm. 
was it the Badlands or Savannas that had the ostrich? Savannah probably had ostriches. And then there was the, oh, what is it, the flying mob. I can't think of it. I don't think there <laughs> was. There was a flying, a flying mob that would fly around your items when you died. Yeah. Oh, a vulture. Be... The vulture. vulture yeah. That's it. Might be. Yeah, I think it's a savannah. That was the Badlands, I think. I think you're right. I'm waiting, waiting for an update in my single player world. I have this huge Badlands or mesa that mm-hmm. I have gone around, exploring around it all, but it's so large in the middle, and I want to wait until some interesting update before I, you know, update those chunks within. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping for. Now we get the, the new higher generation, of course, but if we can get some new mobs as well and maybe some new trees or whatever, I'll wait for that. When I think about trees and adding them to Minecraft, I think the palm tree is probably the most asked for tree that we haven't gotten yet. Yeah. I get You, you kind of have to implement it with the correct update. You can't just be like, oh, we're updating swamps. Here's a palm tree. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I hope they touch up on all of them. One biome that I'm thinking of, of, of offhand was the jungle. And I know they kind of overhauled it with the pandas and the mm-hmm. bamboo. The bamboo. So they probably we they probably won't touch that. That and the taiga because that won the mob vote or the biome vote. Correct. In the mountains, mm-hmm. they won the biome vote. Yeah, when it comes to biome updates i would be okay if it's not the center like we all see the swamp and we're like well the swamp and everything it to me the deep dark still the main focus of the next update and the swamp is kind of added on with maybe birch getting thrown in there because we saw the concept art of that if they do like one or two biomes next to something else that like they're not because if you look at the taiga update it wasn't a drastic overhaul at least from what i can remember so doing side stuff like that, I'd be for granted the swamp seems like a pretty big overhaul adding in the mud and the uh, the trees and the mangrove trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if we got super far off topic on that one or not. <laughs> yeah, we kept it, you know, the wild update. Yeah, it was on topic. But, uh, thank you for those comments, Kit- Kitty Cat 2 and Weezer Good. Those comments were from our Discord, and it's the only place where you can talk to everyone who works on the show easily. Just take Brownie Bits' word for it. Hello, everyone! Your favorite sweet treat, Brownie Bits, here, and I am a member of the Withering Effect Discord. It's a great place to get to know the people from the show and share cookies with your favorite like minded Minecrafters. It's the only place to throw cakes at. Oh, mm, um, uh, I, I mean, submit your questions for upcoming guests and share your opinions about the game. <coughs> Add brownies! <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Sugar Rush the Discord today using the link in the show notes, and I will see you there. Thank you for the Discord ad, Brownie Bits. And speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our Mending Minecraft vote. This week, we asked you to choose between one of three biomes for us to discuss and improve. And your choices were Warm Ocean, Nether Waste, and Beach. And the winner of Mending Minecraft this week is... Beach. As if there was any other choice. Congratulations, Beach. Yes, congrats. I didn't congratulate Beach. I can't believe it. Thank you, Decoy. (laughs) (laughs) I usually do that. Beach had 53 votes. I think it's the most votes any out of any vote we've had. Uh, Nether Waste had 20 and the War Motion with 8. Before we go too far into it, I do want to say Carl has implemented a new way for us to announce uh, thanks to you. So that way we're no longer like at everyone for everything because our Discord's grown a lot in the past year. We're getting a lot of new members, a lot of new content stuff and things are happening. And we don't want to bombard you with notifications. So I think it's the announcement section. If you go there, you guys can click on, uh, what are they called? Emoticons or whatever. What are they called? Emojis. Uh, They're different colored circles. And that'll let us know what you want to get notified for. Mm -hmm. And earlier in the week, a lot of people weren't using the new system and are 
our biome vote for mending Minecraft was actually really low until Carl went ahead and at everyone again. And he's wanting to get away from that. He doesn't want to bombard you with nonsense notifications. So if you guys could hop over to the announcements and just click a couple buttons and you'll be good to go. Right. Do do it. <laughs> do it. Trust me, it'll make your life easier along with us. So a few things on the beach I have here. Beaches are common technical biomes that serve as transition biomes from the mainlands to the to an ocean. There are a total of three different beach biomes, including the beach, stony shore, and snowy beach. Beaches are composed mostly of sand with some gravel, dirt, and clay patches under the water. Similarly to rivers, you can also find some sandstone occasionally if there's like caves underneath of it to hold the sand up from falling. Turtles can spawn here as well as buried treasures, shipwrecks, and rarely underwater ruins. Uh, That's about it for the beach. Yeah, so I think the beach has been the easiest biome to mend for me. When I saw beach one, I got super excited because like, this this is easy. I know what I want when I visit a beach. (laughs) Let's go structures first. Okay. Because I always try to add a structure in a new biome. And I'm going to go small. For the beach, because beaches aren't large biomes. And I'm going sand castles. <laughs> if you get a couple of sandstone walls and you do four of them in a square, it actually looks like a little tiny sand castle, which I think is really cool. Okay. And near the sand castles, maybe a couple pieces of carpet so they look like blankets. Hmm. Nothing crazy out there or something, but I always thought that could be kind of a cool structure to have on a beach when it comes to adding a new tree type palm trees we just talked about this you need a biome to put palm trees in the game yeah there you go i wouldn't put a palm tree in a desert i'd be more inclined to put it in a beach right and adding a new mob to a beach crabs we need some crabs in the game yeah and i thought they could be so crabs in real life are little thieves oh As someone who lived in Florida, (laughs) if you don't watch it, they'll steal stuff. So if you have like a random item on the ground, I could see the crab running over and grabbing the item and taking off with it. Kind of like how dolphins play with items in the ocean. That'd be fun. Yeah, that could be so much fun. And then you send your LA after the items and they can (laughs) fight fight over them. (laughs) Yeah, could you see an LA holding one side of a sand block and a crab (laughs) holding the other and they're just tug of warring with it? And he uh, grabs it and, like, slowly goes into the water. Mm-hmm. Like, makes his way <laughs> into the ocean with your item. You have to go get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the last thing on the crabs, obviously, we would have a crab rave. You play music, the crabs do the dance. Oh, yeah. Crab rave record. That's my beach update. Nice. Yeah, we might have to have a new disc. Exactly. New disc time. We'll have decoy make it. <laughs> That's cute. Very cute ideas mm-hmm. for the beach. Is there anything you would add to a beach decoy? Hmm. Only thing I could think of is like maybe, I don't know, animated waves. You know, waves tend to hit hit the beach. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they if that could be done, but hmm. I know in like shader packs you can see like a little wave of the uh, actually a lot of things wave even like grass and stuff (laughs) yeah but yeah something like that would be cool to see maybe some sea foam particles yeah Mm -hmm. possibly i'm thinking maybe an abandoned boat like we have shipwrecks Mm -hmm. maybe a boat that is partially sinking down into the water and maybe it has it uh what do you call that it's a little more green than uh, like mossy regular boats because it's a little more mossy yeah overgrown that could be a way to to get that appearance yeah on a boat if you want like the algae algae's the word algae yeah yeah that'd be cool that'd be one way to get that type of boat it has to be found or maybe so if you find that boat next to it you could have logs that spell SOS too <laughs> yeah put some lure in there yeah that might be a little too much It'd be funny if, like, if you found one of those, you know, the boat, the SOS, and behind it is a village. Like, it could have just walked to the village. They had help there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. Oh. Village is just behind the tree. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that that would make for some comedy in the random world generation because you know it's going to happen. Oh yeah. Maybe turned turned what do you say? Turned out campfires? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Mhm. Maybe have some cooked fish along the campfires or raw either one. That could be really good too. I didn't think about that. Well, let's move into our main topic. We don't have a ton of time, but I don't think we're going to need a ton of time. Yeah, we covered a lot of the music earlier. Right. Dequoy, your thoughts on the Wild Ups update so far. Does Deep Dark scare the crap out of you? Are you excited for swamps? Frogs? Yeah, both. (laughs) I think I was... Actually, my first reaction was, now when all the cool stuff is moving... (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> to the next update, mm-hmm. I was like, "Ah, oh, that's nice." No, I, I have more time to to explore everything we got in the last uh, update. Mm-hmm. I, I like to uh, progress slowly, and sometimes I get a, a bit uh, stressed out about now. I have to, so much I want to do before the next update because then you have the new features and you want to work with them. So you have to leave the other ideas behind for a while. So that was actually my first reaction. Oh, that that's nice. Yeah. We only get the uh, the new generation, so we you know, might go for some exploration. Maybe I want the spore blossom, and maybe if there is uh, some other block, maybe that's it. And uh, then I can go back to to my regular <laughs> world, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little disappointed actually that we can't choose to keep our world the way. It was. If you have a really old world, it will be unique with the bedrock so high up. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But no, everything will change. Even the, the old generation. And you will have the, the, the deeper caves and so on. Mm-hmm. I was looking forward to see what happened to the bedrock from an old landscape to new. What happened? Did you, would you get some sort of... How will it blend you know, with the low bedrock and the high bedrock it could be some cool you know lower down generation there if you dig it out Mm -hmm. and i just feel i lose maybe some some of the history of an old world when everything will change underneath but i guess for 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 most people it's probably the best maybe the only solution to do it this way true yeah i'm curious if you can pick and choose you know chunks to up I, I know you can nowadays but i'm just curious if you can leave that void there like if stop time yeah like i'm not going to touch these let's update all these other chunks to 118 but these ones are going to stay the way they are Did they mention anything about that yeah i think i'm with deco i think henrik mentioned that no your current chunks you're in your loaded your explorer chunks, wherever the bedrock is now, it's being replaced with deep slate. Yeah. And they're moving the bedrock lower. Mm. All right. Yeah, it would be a fun idea to have that void. It's definitely the easier solution for them because they know you haven't gone into bedrock because it's bedrock. You can't really... Unless you're deleting bedrock, you're not really building anything in bedrock. So they know they can do an easy transition just Replace bedrock with deep slate. Generate new layers. Yeah. Yeah. But it could have made for some cool terrain to not have those areas affected like that. Yeah. And for me, just to, in a couple of years, show my my spawn area, for instance, Mm -hmm. and say, look where the bedrock is now, kids. Yeah. (laughs) When I played Minecraft, when I started to play Minecraft, this was the way it worked. Uh (laughs) Back in my day. (laughs) But uh, yeah, apart from that, I'm really looking forward to the wild update, and I think we have mm-hmm. we haven't seen uh, everything, so I'm really curious. Yeah, what else they will will add? I think we all agreed. We all had the uh, the different reactions to all the quote unquote good stuff being moved to the next update. Like for me, I was like, oh man, I wanted to go ahead and explore that stuff. But when you see what they're doing with it, you're like okay, yeah, it makes sense to push it back. Mm. I am excited to go ahead and get the 118 update here. I hope it doesn't take to, like, the end of December to get here. Yeah. Oh, we also have a new mob 
that is music friendly decoy was that your vote or did you vote for the la oh yeah i i tried to you know i was working during mm-hmm. the show oh, i that's tried right. to to watch twitter now and then but i never saw the where you could vote so i i missed it sadly mm. but i would have voted la uh, if i had the chance well, there we go cool mob you see any cool ideas for it or any future plans for the la uh it's interesting because note blocks in minecraft are kind of confusing right <laughs> and i was yeah. thinking you know how could you implement music somehow for the ordinary player to understand mm-hmm. and i was thinking about the zelda game ocarina of time mm-hmm. even if you don't know anything about music you understand what to do so basically your controller is the ocarina and you have to memorize certain melodies to unlock uh, specific events in the game and uh, the composer uh, made some genius melodies with only those few notes Mm -hmm. and that's super clear right yeah but the note blocks you don't know the notes have different colors but it's they are very hard to separate the different greens and different blues and uh, so on. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they don't change anything about the appearance, maybe you can use the different sounds. So if you place a pumpkin underneath the note block and play it, that could be, that could be for one LA maybe. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you put um, a emerald block, that's another sound that is, Maybe the most clear thing, both visually and sound. You can hear the sound changing as well. I don't know. I I think they need to rework it somehow. If you, it will be very confusing otherwise to know which LA is connected to which note block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same thought. And they'd never really mention if you know it would when they take your item to the note block. Would that note block play a sound? Did they mention that? I mean, I'm sure if you put a pressure plate there you could probably drop it yeah they didn't mention that they didn't mention anything about how the la technically drops the item we don't know if it's on a specific block if it's on the note block or if it's just near the note block right but what if an la can pick up a record and put it in a jukebox (laughs) Ooh. so you can officially have the hopper that puts music into the jukebox for you yeah (laughs) i like that yeah yeah. I mean, he's got little hands and everything. He should be able to put it in there. <laughs> exactly. You got thumbs, use them. Right. He can even fly. He can get up <laughs> high enough. I don't know how it works or anything like that. I just know that's something people have been asking for. So I thought that could be a cool way for Mojang to implement it in the game. Yeah, I like that. Ah, great. Great idea. That's going to do it for today's show. Before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our milk level patrons are Omni Chief, Big Bear, Croc, Fragile Rock, O Beep, Stone Figure, and Vipress Tuna. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, follow us, or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com. Tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links are in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be. The amazing music and sultry voice you hear in the show was created by the one and only decoy. The one and only. Whoop, whoop. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for getting weirded with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.